first started here, I didn't think about media too much, but that was, um, you know, uh, 2002, and media has changed tremendously since then with uh, social networking, mm -hmm. um, w which I consider media as well. Yeah. Um, back then, um, I really didn't care how people were depicted through media, um, as long as they didn't see me as one of those people. Mm. Um, now, I'm so much more aware. Uh, I love watching detective shows, suspense, you know, and, and drama. Uh, and one of my favorite shows is Law and Order SVU. And um, I really started noticing that a lot of the murderers had mental disabilities. And, uh, you know, it, it just portrayed people with disabilities, uh, especially mental disabilities, in a way that we were all dangerous. You know, we were kind of like um, a caged lion who got out by mistake and was hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that really did not settle well with me. And I began to watch other uh, programs, um, you know, movies that uh, depicted someone's life uh, having a disability. And I realized, well, that actor does not have a disability, yet they're playing a person who's blind or a person in a wheelchair or a person who has developmental disability. Um, so my, my thoughts started shifting of, hey, we should be able to be in those roles. We should be able to give in input on uh, what it's really like to be that person and how we need to stop this archaic view of we're all bad and defective and uh, wrong, but actually show people that uh, we are independent, we do have expectations, we have hormones, we have attitudes, we're not all nice, and we're not all mean. And today it's so important to do that through the media because that's primary how we communicate, whether it's email, internet, webcam, social networking, TV, radio, um, that's how we get our first impressions. And as independent people with disabilities, we should be able to dictate what our first impressions are. Um, so I think you've just really got to understand that media is made to entertain, whether that's positive or negative, and it's our responsibility to change wrong perceptions. Long answer to a short question. Language is obviously part of media. Yeah. And um, it's interesting how the disability community, our community, is owning negative language, like cripple, um, um, just like the African American community uh, regained the word, um, and I'm going to say it, nigger. You know, it's acceptable for that community to do what they want to with the words, but we have to be careful that we're not portraying uh, something that uh, makes us separate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We can use cripple in our community if we choose to, and with our friends if we choose to. But if you don't want the rest of the world to use that on you, then you need to be aware of where you use it and how you use it. Mm -hmm. um, I love joking about having a disability. It breaks down barriers. And um, I use those words with my closest friends. Um, but I'm like the, you know, the language police. <laughs> you know, it, it's just uh, when and where. You have to know the appropriate times, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I do like the, the thought of people owning mm -hmm. their language. Yeah. So thank um, we actually do a, a specific presentation called Disability Etiquette and Awareness. And that presentation really focuses on uh, appropriate and inappropriate behavior when interacting with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So it can be able-bodied person with a disability or disability disability. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter. It's it's the the etiquette. And what I tell youth specifically who have a disability is to um, 
you, you know, think of how they felt when they were called certain words. And we're going to pick the bad ones, the cripples, the idiots, the, the retards. How did that make them feel? And to talk to them about, you know, how the world sees those words and the definitions as negative. And they probably do too. So what are they going to do to change it? And how do they want to be viewed? Well, of course, every young person wants to be viewed as an adult, an independent adult. So how are we going to make that part of our language? Well, I am a independent youth with a disability. You know, so it, it's a process. And, and we give them examples. Uh, we're, we're a very honest organization. We have to make it real life because that's what we're working with. Um, so we talk about all kinds of, of language, whether it's related to disability or not, but we really try to connect it to, to that person and, that, um, and their lives and how they want to be viewed. So it is very complex because it deals with self-esteem. It deals with how you see yourself, how you want the world to see yourself. And it took me years of therapy <laughs> to uh, figure that out. Um, <clears throat> but we have to learn that we have control over that. And we need to use it. So. <laughs> cool. Um...